Court's verdict ordering the removal of all restrictions on the entry of women into the Shabrimala Temple has caused great intellectual churn in Indian society. While the mainstream media and certain sections of the intelligentsia have pounced on the opportunity to declare the verdict as a triumph of Indian women's unending struggle against patriarchy, there are a few inconvenient facts that stand out like the proverbial sore thumb in this rose-tinted vision of modernity. Why rose-tinted? Because connecting the Shabrimala issue with women's rights is an endeavour that can only lead to one outcome – cognitive dissonance. The nagging mental discomfort of having to reconcile your belief with direct evidence that challenges it. Here's a question to drive home the point. What is common between 1. The people at the forefront of the massive demonstrations against the Supreme Court verdict 2. The original petitioner in the Shabrimala case who had initially pleaded for the entry restrictions to be struck down but later taken a contrary position and 3. The only judge in the five-member constitutional bench who deferred with the majority view of allowing women inside the shrine? The answer is, all of them are women. And as a woman who follows Sanatana Dharma, I totally understand why women are feeling outraged over a decision that is supposed to have been given in our favour. Let's understand the logic of the judgement first. There are two competing perspectives in the Shabrimala case. The first, to which the vast majority of Ayyappa devotees subscribe to, deals with the freedom to practice religion and sees the bar on the entry of women with reproductive capabilities as a unique expression of faith. The second perspective is that of the women who see the custom as discriminatory, a denial of access to a place of worship that is where the conflict precisely lies. Now, every religious sect is guaranteed protection under the Constitution of India. In fact, the Articles 25 and 26 of the Constitution are structured in a way that they recognize the civilizational distinctiveness of India as a land that has always encouraged its people to pursue the divine in their own unique and diverse ways. However, as the devotees of Ayyappa have been refused this status of religious denomination in this hearing, the unique custom of this shrine is not considered to be an essential practice of Hinduism and therefore is not protected by the law. Having thus denied the diverse ways of worship essential to Hinduism, the only perspective left for the courts to consider is that of discrimination and from there, the judgment proceeds along predictable lines. It is quite natural to ask at this point why Ayyappa devotees have not been given the status of religious denomination when the application of the Places of Worship Act of 1991 had cemented the unique character of Shabrimala Shrine, which must be protected under Articles 25 and 26 as mentioned before. Be that as it may, the larger philosophical question that stares us in the face is this. Are we allowed to acknowledge the sacred dimension of life or not? Those who are mindful of the sacredness of the affair would interpret the unique custom metaphorically as per their own inner journey and respect the unique tradition of the shrine, knowing very well that in this decentralized ecosystem of Hinduism, tradition is highly localized and what is the rule in one shrine could very well be a taboo in another. In the whole outrage over women's entry at Shabrimala, the fact that there are numerous other temples denying entry to men is completely ignored. In the absence of an official text to refer to or a central authority like the church, it is the local belief that must prevail. In other words, you can't believe in Ayyappa without believing in the Agamic traditions associated with him. On the other hand, those coming from a purely rational standpoint are free to ridicule and challenge the believers, but they have no business to poke their nose in esoteric matters and traditions. Shabrimala is a place of worship, more importantly, a place unlike any other 
even in the kaleidoscopic milieu of Hinduism. It is not an amusement park or a cinema hall where you can demand right of entry under the pretext of gender equality. If you don't believe in the particular tradition, you have no business visiting the shrine, which exists exclusively for the believers. What we think about the entry of women in Shabrimala depends on the question we ask ourselves. The answer can never be correct if the question is wrong. I'm Shilpa Nair, a follower of Sanatana Dharma for Upward.